Alrighty, so this is a little demonstration about Stata solenoids, the Stata relays. As uh, many guys at Mechanics have been around engines for a number of years, they're probably most commonly referring to these devices that look like this as Stata solenoids. Stata solenoid is strictly a term uh, for a relay. Uh, what makes a Stata solenoid a Stata solenoid? It was built to carry a high current very quickly, break that current quickly, to start a motor or generator. However, they're also used commonly as relays to switch lower current devices. And in some cases in our industry, in the generator industry, we use these relays for continuous duty. The starter relay or solenoid is built for intermittent duty. There are also many different configurations of how the coils are wired internally. And not only is it a difference between 12 and 24 volts, but it's also a difference as to how that coil operates to its relationship to ground, whether it's isolated or internally powered and the coil will fire to being grounded. Quite often you'll see that with this type of a solenoid here with the three poles where internally the power goes from one pole to the coil the coil is looking for ground and we go right to ground. Very, very common on hydraulic pump setups, but also very common in some of the older Onan generators, especially in campers and some of their older, smaller status type generators. One of the main problems that I've run across in the field has been with these type of solenoids or starter relays that anybody that's worked on cars from the 70s or 80s or even the 60s will say, hey, that's a Ford solenoid. And Onan used these. There's some still photos here that uh, will be added showing this in an, in an older generator. Kohler used these extensively through the 70s, 80s, right up into the 1990s. They're not a bad device. They were meant for intermittent duty. They're very inexpensive, and, and at the time these units were built, being, they were very ubiquitous through the parts industry. Today, with manufacturing, cost of manufacturing, uh, is there an original OEM, original manufacturer, who built these in the past? No, they're probably all built offshore, built by uh, various contractors, and maybe not have the quality of the quality control of the original Ford-type parts. But I bring these to your attention because they can get you into trouble in a, in a hurry if you have the wrong one. So if you walk over to a generator, particularly an old Kohler, and you find one of these relays, and there's a couple of different configurations for them. There's a flat pancake style, which we also took a picture to add to this video that's on a brand new MTU unit. Same function. However, on these type of solenoids, if you're a Ford mechanic or you're back in the day, you'll see that one terminal is marked S and one terminal is marked I. The original intent for those markings were you had the S, which was your signal for your solenoid that would close and make the starter contact, and the I was for ignition. Back in the days before electronic ignition, we would run a bypass to bypass the 8 volt resistor that would drop down the voltage to the coil for 8 volts for running give it a full 12 volts to help boost the current to start the car. In Kohler, they use that I terminal to feed back a signal to their control board to say, hey, I'm cranking, the SAT is cranking. When the SAT stops cranking, the signal drops out and it acts as a safety and proves things out. All so far, all well and good. You go out in the field, you find a bad starter solenoid, or you've had a problem with the starter, you replace that solenoid. If you go to the parts counter and say, hey, I need one of these, pretty much all of your mechanics, all your parts people are going to, oh, that's a Ford solenoid. Yeah, I got one that looks just like it here on the counter. So here's the problem. We have different styles, internally grounded, internally powered to go to ground coils, and we have isolated coils. In this scenario, I'm using my DVOM here. I'm going to take my ohm meter. I check my meter, check my probes. Putting that on the S terminal, going to my ground, and I see 3.8 4 ohms of resistance. It's what I would expect to find on a 12 volt static coil. 
I go to check this part, which is absolutely identical in appearance, and the circuit is open. What is going on here? This is an isolated coil, and my coil is actually across terminals S and I. I have no indication of this from the physical appearance of that solenoid. If I was to substitute this isolated coil solenoid on particularly a coal generator, I am now looking to pick up my ground from my start signal back through my board, and I can land up destroying a control board on the coal unit. Usually, what happens is, is somebody will do that, they'll blow a fuse, put a larger fuse in, there may be just enough voltage to get that through that the coil will work, and it may or may not work. It works, it's fixed, they walk away, and then there's other damage that takes place further down the line, resulting in a service call perhaps the next time it goes to exercise, any number, any number of uh, possibilities. Or it doesn't work right out of the box, and we let the magic smoke out of the control board. Be very, very careful. Always check to make sure that these are the correct solenoids. Now along that same line, I have two other solenoids here, which are industrial. They also, I've seen the same package in the Ford type configuration with the I and the S. These generally aren't marked as well when you have them in this. But they're also, these happen to be 24 volt solenoids. One of the other things that takes place is C69 ohms across this coil. And this one here is about 28 ohms. 28, 30 ohms. There we go. Yeah. Even though these are both 24 volt relays, one is a starter solenoid and one is a relay. If we were to open that relay, the contacts inside would be absolutely identical. You'd see the same amount of copper, the same type of disc, same thickness disc, and you think, okay, they're identical. Why is one not a starter solenoid and why is one a relay? Well, the interesting thing is here that when we're switching high currents, we must pull that solenoid in as quickly as possible. Bang. Reason is we don't want it to arc. When we break that contact and shut the signal off to the coil, we want that armature to break and move as quickly as possible. If it's a little soft, it could arc. Ultimately, if you put the wrong solenoid on, the starter will work. You've got your generator going. However, if it stays in duty for a number of cycles, odds are this is going to end up welding and you'll blow up a starter. Blow up a starter, blow up a ring gear, basically have a catastrophic failure of the starting system. So, so important to determine if you're using a relay or a high current starter solenoid relay. These happen to be for 24 volts. The higher the resistance, the lower the energy that it takes to move the armature inside, and it is made for a long duration or continuous duty, versus the one that had the lower resistance is made for intermittent duty. Now, if you reverse the functions of these, say you had a relay that was being used for a relay duty, say taking on an older uh, K-Lite generator, where they'd use a solenoid like this, a relay like this, to prove out low oil. Low oil switch would give a signal to it, bring it to ground, call, let the current pass through for the safety and shutoff valves, everything's great. Generator runs, you run it for 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour cycling, put the wrong solenoid on, it would still work. You could use a status solenoid. However, interesting phenomenon with electric magnets and coils, if it is not intended for continuous duty, it will warm up. As this coil heats up and overheats, it loses its magnetic properties and over time will release the armature, break the circuit, and you will get that failure. As a technician in the field, you have a response time, you're there two hours later, four hours later, reset everything, this is cooled off, restart it, everything works perfectly. You may never realize you have a problem again until the next power failure and this thing runs 77 hours, eight hours, nine hours to the point it loses its magnetism. Very, very important to be able to identify. Quick rule of thumb, if you are 12 volts, 
on a static solenoid, the coil is going to be three and a half, four and a half, maybe five ohms of resistance. It does vary by manufacturer. And if that same coil is a 12 volt relay, you're going to find that the resistance in that coil is going to be somewhere between 15 ohms up to 25 ohms. Now, if you recall, one of these 12 volt or 24 volt relays, a static solenoid, was very close to that same resistance. So indeed, the 12 volt solenoid for relay duty, for continuous duty, has a very close proximity in its value to that of a 24 volt starter relay. Though I would not recommend that you make that change because you still do not have the spring and the action inside that would you'd expect to find on a sol starter solenoid. Don't substitute them, but be very aware. Now, on the light green solenoid or relay that we looked at on one of the still pitches that was taken is a single wire setup. And the single wire setup was quite common even with the Ford products and stuff like that. Here I have four solenoids, four starter relays, if you want to, if that's what most people consider them to be, that are identical. They have the four poles that you'd expect to find. But what is the function? Again, testing my ohm meter, putting that to ground, and that performs exactly as I would expect. Three and a half to four ohms of resistance. Fantastic. Same test on this one. 4.7, 4.6. Fantastic. Just as a little check, make sure I don't have any action between here and here, here and here, here and here, everything's good. The function of these two relays are the same. They're in the same classification. However, I have these two perform the same test. Open, nothing. Perform the same test. Open, nothing. What do I have going on? How can this be? Do I have broken relays? No, I don't. If I take, and I take this terminal here, and I put it to my battery terminal on this side, it's open. If I take and I put it to the battery terminal on this side, I suddenly see resistance. In this case, 68 ohms or so. This is a 24 volt continuous duty relay internally to the B plus, and then looking for ground to operate. This may be used as a safety, picks up its ground from a, uh, from an oil switch. Uh, there's any number of configurations, but this relay was meant to operate at 24 volts continuously. And a key, key thing here, this relay will only work, will only function if the B plus, the battery, the, 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 the voltage that's being, that's continuous, not the switch leg, if it is on the correct side of the solenoid. And this particular manufacturer has been diligent by putting this bat here so that your cables go on this side from your battery or from your continuous feed and then whatever the load is that you're controlling is going to be on this side of the solenoid or the relay. If you were to reverse this, this relay would never operate. Now, we have this last one here. This manufacturer, again, another little look-see. Put the bat on this side for the 24 volt one. There's no convention to this. This manufacturer put the bat on the opposite side. So now I check that, I have nothing. I go to here, and now I have my 4.3, 4.2 ohms of resistance. This would be considered an intermittent duty 12 volt starter solenoid. Again, battery would have to come in on one side. This terminal needs to see ground. One of the things and one of the applications that this is very common with outside of our industry is on hydraulic tailgates, where a hydra hydraulic tailgate will bring the solenoid, bring the B plus into here, run that down to the shot terminal on the motor, have an arm that operates up, lowers and raise, raises and lowers the hydraulic bed, will bring this to ground, raise the deck, and then manually lower it. It is also very common on snowplow pumps. Again, if you are working on a snowplow pump or a hydraulic system subsystem, if you walked into the auto parts store 
and say, hey, I need this relay, here's the function, here's what it's due. The guy runs over and says, I got one that looks just like it. You go to substitute that relay, and it actually is looking for its connection to ground, it will never work. So in that particular instance, they're identical, but you can't substitute one for the other.